There have been many different syntactic features added to C Sharp over the years, and some of them can probably save you some keystrokes. So let's dig in. Global usings are a neat way you can save some typing. Basically, all you have to do is declare the using as global with the keyword seen here, and now it becomes available as though you typed it in every source member in your project. I personally like to put these in their own global using.cs file so you keep them in one place and can update them quickly when needed. Another way to save typing around namespaces are what's known as file scoped namespaces, which removes the need to place code inside of the curly braces that scope the namespace. If you write your namespace like so, its scope applies to the whole file, saving you the indentations and curly braces. Nice. Now let's talk about some null pointer uh, pointers and some shortcuts around those. The null coalescing operator, these double question marks here, allows you to assign a variable to something if it is not null, otherwise it goes to the next thing in the chain. In this example, not null will be string one, but if I set string example one to null, then the value of the string not null will now be string two. Along the same lines in C sharp eight, the null coalescing assignment operator was added which allows this syntax here where you see the double question mark equals. My string will be assigned to string example two if it is null during execution of the statement. The final null related sugar I want to tell you about is the null propagating operator. This allows you to short circuit a method call on an object if the object is null to avoid the null pointer exception at runtime. In this example, since my object is null, my string remains null but no null pointer exception is thrown due to calling the toString method on a null object. On the topic of constructors and object initialization, we have a few tricks we can do. The first I'll tell you about is a shorter syntax for setting values on an object at initialization time, but not in a constructor. This syntax here shows the instantiation of a new car object, and in the instantiation we are setting two properties which save you from having to do multiple statements setting them like below. In this example, it doesn't save you too much typing, but it can be nice on much bigger objects. Speaking of constructors, C Sharp supports an init keyword, which tells the compiler that we only want to be able to set the value for this property during object construction, but nowhere else. You will receive a compilation error if your code tries to set it outside of just passing it in the constructor. The last constructor related tip I'd like to give you is related to using the this keyword to take out some of the typing when setting up multiple constructor signatures or overloads. In this example, instead of writing the code to set model in the second constructor again, we can add a colon this and pass the model to the above constructor, saving us that line. In this example, it doesn't save much, but when you're doing many parameters and have to build many different constructors, it can be nice to reduce code rewriting. And now some other what I'll call meta functions. So you may have heard about the name of and the type of function, but just in case you haven't, I'll cover those real fast. Name of returns a string with the value of the variable name. In this case, it would print the string my string and not Chris. The type of function will return a string that gives you the full type as a string with the namespace as well. If you wish to only see the type itself without the namespace, you would access its dot name property like so. Okay, that's cool and all, but here's something that you may have not seen before, the call member name attribute. You can use this along with its two friends, caller file path and caller line number to receive information about who called the method. Member name gives you the member name that called the method. The file path gives you the source location and the line number gives you the, well, line number. This has been a quick overview of some of my favorite features of the C Sharp language. If you feel like you leveled up in this video, please leave a like and subscribe and let's get on to the next one.